That will continue until around T minus two minutes, and that's just to keep everything as cold as possible. Regarding the internal systems, avionics, communications, guidance and control, those are healthy and we are currently tracking no issues with the Falcon 9 rockets. The second thing we like to check on is the payload. SHL-2 itself has transitioned from external to internal power on board its own batteries, and they are currently tracking no issues as well. The third and fourth, the weather and the range, we always like to check on these because they are crucial to the successful launch. Weather balloons are released about every 10 minutes, and we saw some thick clouds and some cumulus clouds, but those have cleared and weather is go for launch. And that fourth item, the range, an ever important purpose, they have cleared the surrounding ground, water, and airspace, and they are go for launch as well. Now at this T minus 60 second mark, as we come in a few minutes, it's a pretty interesting thing that happens. Listen in for the announcement that the Falcon 9 is in startup. Now that implies the vehicle state machine has transitioned to the place where all of the onboard flight computers have fully taken over the vehicle. There are no more humans in the loop at that point. So the onboard autonomy, the software that I enjoy working on, is in complete control of the vehicle. So that's a neat transition from the humans in the loop to the machines in the loop for the 60 seconds before launch. So as we near that T minus zero mark, let's listen into the terminal countdown nets. Back to see motions are complete. Cradle arms open for a strong back retract. Pogo bleed verification. Stage one locks close up. Strong back is at a retract angle of 88.3 degrees. Two locks look complete. And Falcon 9 is on internal power. Ground gas closeout starting. Ground gas closeouts complete. Falcon 9's in startup. Stage 2 press per flight. Go for launch. Stage one coming up to startup pressures. Nice, 15 seconds. Falcon 9 is configured for flight. 10, 9, 8, 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now we've had successful liftoff of the Falcon 9 vehicle as it carries S-Hail-2, uh, communication satellite to geostationary transfer orbit. Now we've cleared the towers and we are ascending. The next major milestone as we come up is Max-Q, that maximum aerodynamic pressure that the vehicle will experience as it goes through the thicker parts of the atmosphere. As we get higher, the density of the atmosphere decreases and there's less and less load on the vehicle. You should hear the call out for that soon. vehicle has passed through maximum aerodynamic pressure. And we've had max Q, so again, decreasing pressure on the vehicle as we continue to ascend through the thinner parts of the upper atmosphere. Now we're coming up on a sequence here where a few show. events will happen in very short succession. Those events are MECO, stage separation, and then SES-1. Those stand for MECO, main engine cutoff stage separation, and then SES, which is second engine start number one, the first of the two planned burns today. And those are Miko's when we shut off the nine Merlin engines of the first stage, and then once we've shut those down, we separate the two stages, and then once the stages are separated, the second stage engine, the Merlin vacuum engine, is exposed to space and it will begin burning. That will happen over the span of about 10 seconds, starting about 20 seconds or so from now. Again, main engine cutoff, stage separation, second engine start. We go ahead, stage separation. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. And we have had second engine start as the orange glow appears to brighten up the Merlin vacuum engine in the center of your screen. Again, transitioning the responsibilities from the first stage to the second stage. We'll follow both of those vehicles in parallel as we continue this webcast. But for now, the next major milestone is on the second stage, and that is when we deploy the fairings that encapsulate the payload. So s 2 is protected from the aerodynamics of ascent by that fairing. Once we're out in space, the air is not thick. We do not need it anymore, so we drop it to reduce our total mass. That fairing deployment will occur about 10 seconds from now. Fairing separation confirmed. And with the fairing deployment that you saw on your screen, we now have s 2 exposed to that beautiful vacuum of space. Now, second stage is going to go quiet here for a few minutes. Remember, you can see the orange on your screen. MVAC is still burning, and this is the first of the two planned burns for second stage. This burn will be multi-minute, and we'll return to it in a bit. We'll shift our focuses back to the left of your screen now, where the secondary mission, the landing of that first stage, is targeting the drone ship, of course, I still love you, in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, just like second stage, that first stage is going to conduct two burns in its lifetime. And those two burns, we've already seen the first one. Or I'm sorry, we are about to see the first one in re-entry, and then we will see the landing burn. Now, that re-entry burn is, is self-described. It's right before we re-enter the atmosphere. We want to slow down our velocity as much as possible. We're traveling very, very quickly. You can see on your screen, we're going 2,300 meters per second or so. It's an extremely fast velocity. We want to reduce that before we actually re-enter the thickness of the atmosphere again. So that's what the re-entry burn is doing, and that will occur about 
a minute and a half or so from now. Stage two is following a nominal trajectory. you're just tuning in, we've had successful ascents of the two stages. They have separated. Second stage is continuing on with S. Hale set two. First stage is coming back. We're about a minute away from that re-entry burn to slow us down. That re-entry burn itself will last for about 20 seconds, reducing our velocity before we get into the density of the upper atmosphere. A few seconds away now. It's interesting to note, as you can see on the left side, we are actually engines facing the incoming air. So we're going engine first, and that's why the burn does slow us down. As the vehicle burns its engines, that will push us back up. And because we're going engine first, that will slow us down and decelerate the vehicle. Those quick puffs you're seeing Stage are cold gas FPS thrusters that are there to make minor attitude or position corrections on the vehicle. Stage one entry startup. And that footage is being sent down from onboard cameras in space. So you can see through the choppiness there that the entry burn has started. Remember, 20 second burn in total for the re entry. Stage one entry burn shut down. And the entry burn has concluded. As you can see, the exhaust there on the left side. Now we're going to go into the second of the two plan burns, the landing burn soon. But it's worth noting that we'll have a very short sequence here as well. While the landing burn is occurring, second stage is going to conclude its first of two burns. So you'll see the landing burn start on the left side of your screen, and then you'll see the second stage stop firing on the right side of your screen. And then about 20 seconds after, you'll see the left stage hopefully come down with zero velocity on the surface of the drone ship. Landing burn start. Seco number one, landing bird conclusion. And we're about 30 seconds out again. Landing burn, Seco one, one and then landing conclusion. That feed is intermittent. If it does come back, it will show up and pip on screen. Stage two, FTS is saved. Landing bird startup. And there was Seco. You caught it at the very end there. Don't know exactly what's happening with the landing, but we'll report back for that as soon as we have Perfect information. Enough. But you saw that blip there stage at the end where deployed. Seco one, second engine cutoff number one, did occur, where the second stage stopped firing. We're going to check some data and tune in on first stage here in a second. Orbital insertion. All right, landing shut down. And there it is. The first stage has landed on the drone ship. Of course, I still love you in the Atlantic Ocean for another recovery and a potential third refurbished flight of this same booster. So with good success of that secondary mission, we'll transition back to the primary mission here, which is the delivery of s Hale 2 to geostationary transfer orbit. And what we're going to do here is what we call a coast phase. It's going to last for about 15 minutes. Second stage has burned its first of two, and now it's going to coast for a bit before it's aligned properly to execute its second burn. So we're going to coast for about 15 minutes now. We'll turn to you with the deployment of the s Hale 2 satellite when we return. <laughs> 